We are back live here on our world famous Cheeky Jaguar Radio broadcast, coast to coast to border to border on iHeartRadio and AMFM 247.com. Tune in iTunes and of course Radio Loyalty. And we have a great guest with us today. She uh, joins us live here on our broadcast. And I am no, I know, I know, beyond the shadow of a doubt, I'm going to butcher your first name, but we're going to give it a shot here. Denon Joiner? Denine. Denine, okay. Jiggy Jag, the ugly American, on display. <laughs> Uh, she is a, a black Indian woman born into a family legacy of highly gifted healers from the Native American uh, tribes, and uh, she joins us today here on a broadcast. Get more information on her website, D-E-N-N-E-E-N-J-O-Y-N-E-R.com, and uh, she joins us today here on our broadcast, and you have a tremendous book out there, uh, Soul Wounds and Secret Relevations. And uh, a warrior daughter's awakening to pain and destiny. And she joins us today here in a broadcast. So first of all, tell us a little bit about yourself, my friend. Okay. Well, first of all, hello, and thank you for having me. Yes. I'm excited. I'm excited to be here. I am in Pittsburgh. I'm a born and raised Pittsburgh woman, and that's where I'm actually calling you from today. And I am daughter number seven to my parents. All girls. <laughs> you can imagine that. I know, right? All <laughs> girls. I'm the baby. Um, uh, I'm not spoiled, though. I'm not spoiled, but I am the baby. I enjoy uh, cooking. I'm a foodie, so I like to eat it, too. <laughs> uh, I like to think that I'm a, a wine connoisseur as well. And, and I enjoy reading. I enjoy reading books and reading people. That's awesome. That's fantastic. So uh, so tell me and John about this book. Yes. So my book, uh, available in paperback and hardback, it's called Soul Wounds and Sacred Revelations. And it chronicles my uh, journey with emotional pain that I carried from the time that I was seven all the way up until I was 47 believe it or wow. not. So there was consecutive uh, life events that were painful and traumatic that happened to me. And I never, I never once stopped to grieve them. And so what ended up happening, because I thought that I could carry them and just basically grin and bear it like most people, I found out that that was further from the truth that at some point that I was gonna have to face all of this pain. And so I hit rock bottom in 2011, and that's when the healing journey started for me. So this book has everything to do with what an awakening looks like and what it really looks like to actually decide to live your life instead of end it by suicide, which is what I was facing. Wow. Well, I will have to say, uh, you, 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 you mentioned your age earlier, and uh, they, they, they sure as hell are right when they say black don't crack, because uh, <laughs> you, 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 don't, you don't look uh, 47 yeah. or whatever the hell you were saying you are. I, I know. Well, listen, it's so funny, because I still get carded sometimes when I go to restaurants and I order the wine that I just told you I enjoy <laughs> every now and again. I, you know, and it's so funny because the waitress, you know, or waiter, they're they're young people, and they're carting me, and I'm like thinking, you know, I have shoes older than you, and you're <laughs> carting, you awesome. know, but I love it. I love it. You know, it's a it's a good uh, ego boost for sure. But uh, hey, surely you have a baby face, ma'am. Yes. Would you say? I said you've got a baby face, ma'am. Well, thank well, you. Well, I bartended, I would have carted you too. So. <laughs> So you're a soul medium, you're a spiritual coach, storyteller. Uh, tell tell us uh, how this uh, how this book came together. Talk to us about the writing process for this book. Okay, so I am a first time author, and so this was a huge feat for me to to actually decide that I was gonna, you know, partake in writing my story. 
if I had, I guess, to choose what type of story I would have written other than a memoir, it probably would have been, you know, something more like mystery or, you know, or something that was kind of comedic. But I knew that I had to write my life story. And although there are some uh, parts that is funny to my life, that's not what really I highlighted uh, so much in this book. I really thought about how can I share my blueprint for healing and what I uncovered and discovered about the DNA behind emotional pain and how our families and our ancestors had everything to do with discovering our spiritual gifts that are often hidden in all of this muck. So I knew that I had to get the message out somehow, some way. And so the book was my only way that I could really reach people that I may never meet but that I could actually empower them to see their life in a different way. That's fantastic. So uh, what are some of your goals for this book? My goal is, is generally to do what I, what I intended, which is to get it in the hands of tens of thousands of people who find themselves basically grappling every day with getting out of bed and wondering when the bottom is going to find, you know, fall out like I thought. Oh, yeah. I knew that, you know, I knew and I could feel the walls of my life closing in on me. But I still thought that I could, you know, get around it somehow, that I wouldn't really have to go there and really, you know, face all of the things that I had encountered throughout my life. And so, you know, my goal is really to give people hope and to give them another option with healing. Native American inspired healing has everything to do with empowering the person who is carrying the pain to look at their life in a different way by becoming a student of their life. And so this book pretty much gives them, like I said, the blueprint to start to, to examine that pain and to do it with courage. Because I believe that most people tend to not focus on their pain because they really don't know where to start. And they yeah. also think that the pain is going to be as equally devastating as it was when it first occurred. And that's further from the truth. We have got a, a great guest with us today. She joins us live here in our broadcast. She has a tremendous, tremendous new book out there. And uh, so uh, with, with this whole book, what do you want readers to take away from your writing of this great book? I want them to to know that Emotional pain is sent to us really in preparation for why we're here. And so although it is discomforting, the pain is really in preparation for that destiny. But because we become more human, you know, more earthly, um, we forget that we are spiritual beings first. Yes. And so we get further and further away from that memory of being spiritual beings and so, you know, the preparation that comes with the pain that was sent to us really from the vine to really prepare us turns into something more because we then start to include other earthly things that are going on in our lives. Yeah. So we are attracting all of this, you know, turmoil and we're focusing more on the pain, which is distracting instead of actually looking to it to actually mold us and prepare us. And I really have to say that, you know, I haven't met anyone yet who has told me that, you know, when they were growing up in their household, that their, you know, their parents or their primary caretaker actually showed them how to respond to emotional pain. Most people, you know, our parents, they, you know, mine included, they didn't include that, you know, in the parenting handbook, you know, it, <laughs> it happens. You know, emotionally, like, what do you do? You know, and so most people, because, you know, facing it makes them uncomfortable, including, um, you know, having to really just unpack things. We learn to grit and bear it because basically that's what we saw. We saw our parents, you know, um, survive, you know, a lot of different traumatic events um, and or pain. And so we've adopted their ways and their ways aren't the best, but that's what they did. And so we do that too. And so basically yes. what I'm, you know, empowering and want people to know is that it's okay. It's okay that you didn't know. And it's okay 
you know, that you, you learned the wrong way to respond to it. But I'm trying to really, you know, impart to people the right way to do it. And when you learn the right way to respond to pain, you know, past and present, then you feel more free and it opens you up to actually remember and move forward to the purpose that is waiting for you. John, uh, jump in there, my friend. I've been reading a little bit on your um, website here. Um, do you think, um, and I love what you're saying, but do you think sometimes people have a trouble with the pain because everybody deals with it differently? Because it says you were into social work, so I'm sure you encountered some stuff that you would have never thought you'd encounter in your life. And I'm sure that weighed heavily on you, much less other people. And it's like, um, my parents were, well, my mom was actually good with it because um, she told me once, you know, I was like, people sit there and think that, you know, pe other people have it worse, and sometimes they do. But your problems are the worst because you're the one having to deal with them, is what she told me. She goes, um, she goes, I know you're going to, you may not deal with this the way I do. She goes, I'm here for you. Come to me when you need it. But she goes, don't think your problems aren't big. She goes, but don't let them consume you. Mm -hmm. And I just didn't know if that was because different people deal with different stuff because I grew up battling depression a little bit here and there because I was like the little passive aggressive nerd kid growing up mm -hmm. and um, had a good soul and everything. And it's like you're talking about empaths here. I truly believe in that because I think some people are put in certain situations for a reason. Yes. It's like I had a girl that worked for me in the restaurant industry and um, sweetheart of a kid, just a great kid, biggest nerd like I was. And that's the reason I think we liked each other so much as buddies. But anyway, um, we worked together on a Sunday and I, she was like, I go, she asked me, when's the next time I work? I go, I don't work again until Wednesday. I got Monday, Tuesday off. She's like, okay. And I go, I go, do you work Wednesday? And she's like, yeah, and I go, you better be here. Well, she went home and then Monday, I guess, she had something that kind of set off her depression. And then Tuesday, she thought very seriously, she said about killing herself. But she told me, she goes, the only reason I didn't is because you made me promise I was going to be here and I wasn't going to disappoint you. Hmm. And I have never blubbered so much in my life. Yeah. I was just like, I told her, I go, if you let anybody know I have a true heart, I go, we are in big trouble, okay? And she started laughing and everything, but... <laughs> But, I mean, I think people are put in positions and spots because there is a need and whether somebody actually reaches out for it or not. Yes, I would agree with that. And, and you're right that everybody, you know, everybody has a, a, a different tolerance, if you will, when it comes to emotional pain. And, again, it comes from, you know, from your first family, your parents. And so I heard you say about your mom, you know, her tolerance and what she instilled in you about it, and also your dad. So I would say you're probably somewhere in between the two of them, but probably more yeah. so leaning towards your mom's emotional framework because she basically gave you permission, if you will, and told you, you know, that it's okay. She told you what to expect, um, you know, and how to navigate it. But she also said that I'm here for you. And there's a lot of people who don't have that type of support from any one of their parents, you know. And so, you know, when you don't have that support, when you don't have someone telling you those things or things similar to that and telling you that it's okay and that I want to hear from you when you are in pain. I want to know, you know, how your day was. I want to know what your highs and lows were. You know, if you have somebody, you know, who is very vested in your emotional um, well-being, I mean, that's beautiful. It really is. Yeah, it's you pretty know? lucky. Yes, for sure. For sure. You know, but there's people out here who don't have that, didn't have it. And so really, you know, they're they're really thinking that, you know, what's the use? What's the use of trying to, yeah. you know, unpack this? And, you know, you know, and for some people who are 40 and above, they really think that it's like useless. And that's further from the truth. You know, I've come to find that, you know, people who are 40 and above or the people who have the greatest potential because you've lived a while. And so you, you know, you know, you have those experiences. It doesn't mean that, you know, because you've had those experiences that your life is not worth anything or it's not worth living. It's not true. It means that, you know, if you have and you can tap into that discord, you know, the feeling that makes you feel like 
you know, why am I even here? That's when you really need to look into it because that's your soul calling you. It's saying to you, no, there's so much more. Like, don't settle. Don't give up. Well, you have been uh, fantastic today. Uh, oh, yeah, by she's the way. awesome. Uh, Thank we you. we are we are definitely going to have to have you back. Uh, well, when, love that. when we have a little bit more time, and I also need to. Uh, I, I've got a couple other people I want to connect you with as well for uh, for interviews. So uh, before we let you go, how do we find you online? Uh, social media, get your book, everything. Yes. So my book is available, Barnes and Noble. And Amazon and Kindle, you can get that all online because the stores are probably closed. I'm sure they're not essential. <laughs> <laughs> I had to say that. And then you also could connect with me on my website, DeneenJoiner.com, um, Instagram, same, Deneen Joiner. And then I also have a Sacred Learning Village, which is on Facebook, and it is Choose to Be Empowered. So if you could like and follow me, that would be wonderful, and you would be connected to me, and you'll get post and inspiration every day. Awesome. Awesome. Well, you are uh, tremendous, and uh, 